Good Friday evening to you. I'm 10 Tampa Bay meteorologist Natalie Ferrario. We're here live to give you the latest update on the tropics. At 8 o'clock, the National Hurricane Center did drop down a brand new look at some of the tropical outlooks, not only for the disturbance we're tracking in the Caribbean, but for all of the disturbances we've been tracking across the Atlantic. You see three here, right? It gets very ominous seeing that much activity in the central and eastern portions of the Atlantic Ocean. I can go ahead and give you a sigh of relief. We're not worried about anything that's even happening in this area because a lot of this is actually starting to kind of show signs of weakening, especially these two disturbances right here. And this wave just off the uh, west coast of Africa is not even going to be even try to make it its way off the west coast until we get closer to about early next week. So we'll be talking about that down the road. We also have Tropical Storm Franklin that is continuing to trek its way to the north tonight by late in the weekend and early next week. This is actually going to just drive just to the west of Bermuda as a cat one, possibly a cat two hurricane and that would actually be our second hurricane of the Atlantic hurricane season. So that's also going to be staying well away from the United States. But let's go ahead and dive in deep on this system right here. This is the big story that we have been tracking all week long. The National Hurricane Center update by update has continuing to increase the chances of tropical development with this area of very disorganized thunderstorm activity. So what's happened over the last 24 hours, we're starting to see more thunderstorm activity develop within this disturbance. Now the National Hurricane Center as of 8 o'clock tonight, bumping it up to about a 50% chance that in the next 48 hours, that could be our next tropical disturbance. And of course, that likelihood is higher as we go through the next seven days, because I actually think that potential is going to happen by the end of the weekend to early next week. And you see this hatched red area right here. This is not a forecast track, and it is also not a forecast cone. This is not saying where things are going to end up uh, basically going. What it's showing you is this is the area that we could see that closed center, basically this area of low pressure become stronger and actually develop into something tropical. It could be anywhere in this region, so it could be as far south as to the northwestern Caribbean. It could be as far north as the eastern Gulf of Mexico. But let me show you what some of our models are talking about, because I do think that's painting a little bit of a clearer picture as far as what we're going to be anticipating or what we could see as we go through the weekend and into early next week. First things first, as of this morning, it was really late morning, early afternoon, the National Hurricane Center went ahead and gave this classification an invest. It's invest 93 L, so it's not officially named. It's not organized. It is not officially a tropical cyclone just yet. Right now it's a wave of disorganized activity, but it's given that invest capability because now we can put data into it. There are computer models that are going to be cranking out where they think the center of the storm will develop. And the reason we say that is because it's so important to know where the actual center of the system is before we can even potentially drive into the future and see where this could go. And over the last several hours, we have just been getting this data coming in very, very slowly. These spaghetti models that you see very famously each and every hurricane season. We've been waiting for this data to kind of really dive in and make it into our system over the last several hours. We're starting to get a little bit of a better picture at that. And you can see this spread is wide. This is not basically a guaranteed. This is where things are going to be going on, but it gives you a good idea that some models are trying to bring whatever turns of invest here, whatever becomes of it, trying to bring it as far west as the Florida Panhandle or as far to the east as southwestern Florida. And then there's a good spread even in between. Some of the models continuing to leave more so towards the Big Bend Eastern Panhandle region. And let me go ahead and walk you through that because this is what's been painting that picture over the last several days. This is the European model. So this is one of the global models that we use or rather long range models that we use, especially with tropical development. And this has been consistent on picking up this tropical deep moisture right over the northwestern Caribbean Sea and the Yucatan Peninsula. That has been pretty consistent and it is still holding on to that potential, especially now tonight really over the Yucatan, seeing some of that activity trying to bubble up. Look what happens as we get towards the end of the weekend and into early next week. That's when we likely could have a closed low. Right now, it's a broad area of low pressure, so it is just a mess. It cannot really figure itself out at this point, but what's going to happen is that will get tighter. That will turn into a closed low and bam, there you go. You've got a center of circulation. You have the center of a tropical system. So once that happens, now we're going to be able to get a better idea of where this is going. The European has been holding on to the eastern Gulf of Mexico through Tuesday, strengthening over those very warm Gulf of Mexico waters as it continues to drift its way to the north northeast, 
trying to aim somewhere into that Big Bend area. So possibly as north as Cedar Key or even out towards the eastern portions of the Panhandle and pushing through through Wednesday morning and into those afternoon hours clear across the state. Let me show you the GFS. This is one that starting today it picked up on this activity. The past couple of days it was not buying an organized system forming, but today it did start to pick up on that trend. It actually moves it a little bit quicker through the eastern portions of the Gulf, but it also tries to make things possibly a little stronger as it does pick up that forward momentum. And it also wants to aim a little bit more so into the Florida Panhandle. But remember, we talk about the dirty side of storms, and that would be that northeastern quadrant. Anything that's flung up on that eastern and northeastern edge of any type of tropical system would bring bands of heavy rain, especially along the coastline, and possibly some of those bands having isolated tornadoes embedded within that activity. So that's what we'll be watching for the potential for those heavy torrential downpours as well. The European trying to again keep the bulk of that heaviest rain right over the eastern portions of the Gulf of Mexico. But some of that will of course clip possibly parts of the immediate west coastline. I will tell you this is an actually area that is drought ridden. It, the rivers, the creeks and a good chunk of that soil could actually take a good drink of water at this point. But the question mark is where is all that rain going to fall because that is going to change. The forecast on that will change as we go through the weekend into early next week. But as mentioned, this is a area that for August for the rainy season, it's not typical to be dealing with drought conditions. It's not typical to be dealing with a severe or extreme drought along that immediate coastline. That's what we're dealing with. It's to the point where we could use some of those good tropical downpours. What we don't want is a strengthening system that's going to have those tropical storm force winds or worse, possibly even some of that storm surge trying to push along the coastline, especially those barrier islands or even that beach erosion. We don't want all those side effects. We just really need that rain. So if there's anything you can take home from everything we've just gone over, I wanted to be as transparent as possible as what as meteorologists we're seeing on either side of our models, our future models, which are not a forecast. It's just an idea of what's trending. But what we're taking away from that is it's likely we're going to be dealing with a tropical depression forming as early as Sunday. It's likely going to be the late parts of the weekend, even into early next week. I think we'll gradually get maybe a slow improvement in a system trying to get a little stronger, possibly even up to a tropical storm status. So as we go through Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, if anything's in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, that's going to try to push impacts, whether it's outer fringe or maybe even a little bit more direct, it'll try to push those impacts our way. So think of that rain, that uh, heavy wind from time to time and some possibly isolated tornadoes within some of those bands that will move through. That's going to depend on just how far off the coast the center of this system could, could end up becoming. Then as we go through that Tuesday, Wednesday time frame, it is trending more likely that it will be a tropical storm on the list that we'll be watching out for. We don't have a lot of to go off of when it comes to path, timing, intensity, and of course those direct impacts because we do need that center of circulation to grab onto. We need an organized system for our computer models to basically go forward in time and see where that system would go. So that is basically what we are waiting for. I do think we're gonna get that information pretty soon here, especially as we go through the weekend ahead. So if there's anything you can even take away home from that, it is to make sure you keep yourself as in tune to the forecast this week. And you don't wanna check out completely because we are gonna have some updates for you as we go through the weekend. I mentioned earlier Tropical Storm Franklin that will get updated to a hurricane over the weekend, but that's no concern for us. That'll be our second hurricane. And then as mentioned, if anything does turn tropical, a tropical depression, it'll get a number. However, if we go to a named storm, that would happen at a tropical storm status, which is looking a little more likely in the eastern Gulf by early next week. The next name on the list is Idalia. That'll be the eye storm that, of course, gets everyone's attention anytime we're talking about this time of year. So we'll be tracking that very, very closely for you. That is going to be the name that we will likely see for this classification based on those chances increasing for development. So we have latest updates coming in every few hours from the National Hurricane Center. Our computer models are also busting out the latest information every several hours as well. We will be joining you on, on air on 10 Tampa Bay at 11 o'clock at night with some updated information. But as we go through the weekend, make sure you're staying informed, prepared and connected because our team of meteorologists and we got five of us, we are all going to be here to keep you as prepared 
and as ready for anything that does develop in the tropics.